a lot of our customers that our applications are on the cloud now. How does this help me understanding my cloud application performance? Yeah, that's that's a great piece of the change that we're seeing in troubleshooting these applications, right? That was a great way to show, hey, if it's on your network and you understand the topology, here's how our system can help you. In the case of, of where that application may be in the cloud or multiple applications of the cloud, because we're participating as part of the routing control plane, we have insight into that as well. Uh, here what I brought up is a set of dashboards. Our customers do have the ability to create their own dashboard, so every user can build a set of dashboards that they want to see and only they see. And then the admins have the ability to extend the dashboard, so they can actually build out a set of dashboards for each team if they want or, or a set of functionality and workflows for operations. They have a lot of flexibility in what they're building. Here I'm going to come down to a cloud performance dashboard that we built under services. And what that would show is here's all of my business performance tests that I'm running out to the cloud. So I've got uh, here Google G Suite application. I've got some Salesforce.com. I've got you know uh, connections to Box, Office 365. Everybody's got Outlook nowadays. You know how uh, is it performing? What are we seeing from a, a cloud perspective? What we see here in the the actual output of this report is we can see here for Google G Suite that the little black line that's in the middle of that blue bar, that's telling me where my normal baseline for this hour of day is, day of week. And I can see suddenly this Google G Suite, I'm way outside of my normal uh, latency for this particular application. Once again, we click to drill in. The system's going to provide us all the contextual information. So we get path. So what is the path you know, for this particular service, this Google G Suite? It is actually delivered over a private peering that we have with Google in this particular example. And so it's one hop away, and it's going out of our uh, New York to Chicago, testing that, that wide area circuit, and then going out and then connecting directly to uh, Google G Suite. Now, I can see down here the trend plot for this tells me that, in fact, there is some definite delay. We were going from two or three milliseconds all the way up to three seconds on the delivery of this particular application. Once again, I'll hit the play button to see what's happening. Right now, as I hit the play button, I go from this particular path to my new path. So here, the old path there is in gray. And now my new path is going from Chicago out to LA, then out one of my external peering sites, out, and it looks like what a five hop route across the internet over to this particular network within Google. This tells me immediately I've had this shift I now understand what's impacting that performance of that cloud application. I know, you know, if something happens, I can be alerted. These, because we're listening to the, the routing control plane, we can actually alert to path changes for different services. So not only can we say, hey guys, the latency went up, but we can say, hey, the path changed, and this is where maybe it's going across a set of devices you didn't want it to, or it's in, the the performance is degrading, and you want to be alerted. You have the ability to set that and be proactively notified. Now in this case, I'm going to click here on the actual icon here for this prefix to say, show me what's going on for this prefix. I'd like to understand, is it everything that's going on to Google? Is it a, just the G Suite application? And show me what we've recorded. So what this tells me here is I'm actually seeing numerous events. I've seen them about every two hours. So this is a repeating thing, and I can actually drill down and see exactly where the hops were that were advertising this. So I was, I was having some sporadic routing being advertised into my environment, changing my external path, not taking my private peering. I now know how I can go and reconfigure that so that it's always going to take my private peering. I'm not going to see this particular performance issue unless I've lost my connectivity to that, that particular uh, exit point. So that, that's really helpful, Matt. And, and a lot of our customers, right, the large financial institutions, utilities sometimes uh, are using circuits where they'll go across service provider networks, right? They may have some external, especially our enterprise customers for sure. Do I have visibility if I'm going across an AT&T or Verizon or you know, CenturyLink, if somebody's providing me an MPLS service, will this work across that service provider uh, IP or MPLS infrastructure as well? Yes, absolutely great question. In fact, that's what a lot of our enterprise customers today, uh, whether you have an IP MPLS backbone that you manage yourself or you have one that you're buying service from an AT&T or a Verizon or someone else uh, from a service provider perspective, we can tell you uh, exactly where the latency changes happened 
and where the issue of responsibility falls, right? If it's if it's the AT&T cloud that suddenly has gone from being 50 milliseconds to being 600 milliseconds, we can point to the fact that there was a path change. And many times our customers will use that in their negotiations and discussions with their carrier customer. It's funny because uh, many times our carrier customers are on the other side using our reports to understand within their network how this changed and why that service path changed for that particular customer. You know, so it's it's uh, it's interesting to be able to provide that level of, of view and telemetry to both parties, kind of with a, a different view for the audience that that is interested in that information.